from movies and fine arts to toys and sports, designers around the world mine popular culture for stylish inspiration. In this issue of Video Fashion Style, we take a deep dive into fashion's long and colorful history with pop culture. Then, meet contemporary fashion's biggest pop fanatic, Jeremy Scott. I just really like to try to talk about ideas and culture and what's going on and, you know, everything that's influencing me and touches me and just kind of put it out there for food for thought. Plus, see how the irreverent Italian label Moschino has evolved under Scott's creative direction. Jean-Paul Gaultier delivers his final ready-to-wear collection with a spectacular pair of show. I didn't go to school of fashion. I study fashion, let's say, through magazine. Ma fashion magazine, it was my Bible. Follow the yellow brick road with Ashis and step into Anna Sui's optimistic world. I love posters the way people love art, the graphics of the psychedelic art or the pop art. So I try to recreate it in all the textiles. Plus, designers team up with blockbuster sensation Black Panther for a fashion event you don't want to miss. We're at an interesting inflection point with not only the fashion industry, but industry in general, where people are using art to speak for people who haven't been spoken for. It's all next on Video Fashion Style. Pop culture and fashion have always been intertwined. The fashion industry has a long history of pulling inspiration from what's happening around the world. The beauty of fashion is that it's a mirror of our culture and designers really translate what's going on around us. Literature, movies, television, and the arts have proved to be endless sources of inspiration for designers around the globe. I remember hearing about the Viking series on the History Channel, and I just fell in love with it. And that was kind of the starting point. I was already uh, always obsessed from uh, Twin Peaks, from David Lynch. And from uh, Twin Peaks, uh, I, I studied the attitude, the atmosphere. I loved John Waters since I was a teenager, and I just, I just saw Cry Baby. And I just thought it was so romantic. And it's a good excuse to do the prom princess dresses and stuff. The concept is Betty and Veronica. The thing that we were most excited to sort of focus on was their friendship and their support of each other. They were best friends, and so best friends, BFF, was our theme for the whole thing. The incredible Mr. Fox was the inspiration there, so whether his little furry paws, the fox clutch, the hats that have that little hint of an ear in them as well. They're just fun and whimsical. Even the most venerated fashion houses are not immune to the appeal of pop culture. Have you heard about the photo bomb at the end? Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson both walked the runway at the very end, and that was hilarious. Besides the Zoolander actors, countless celebrities have appeared on the runways. Well, when I saw Lady Gaga, that was a real surprise, and I think everybody around was like, is it her, is it not her? And on the clothing. The Justin Bieber fans are like the most crazy, obsessed fans. And then we also have Zayn because he left One Direction. There was like a huge thing. Unexpected fashion collaborators have come in the form of household brands from office supplies and cleaning products to more unlikely partners. Oh, and Hood by Art sponsored by Pornhub, and you know, I love, you know, these worlds merging. I love all of our sort of bodega-inspired bags, which were inspired by Lucy Sparrow's felt kitchen. You could call it the Jeremy Scott effect. The designer is contemporary fashion's pop culture fanatic and has been spreading avant-garde fashion fun since the 90s. There's a lot of whimsy, a lot of tongue-in-cheek, and filled with color and optimism. It's always a really great time at Jeremy Scott. He dreamt of becoming a designer since childhood. And in 1997, Kansas City native Jeremy Scott went from being a farm boy to a fashion provocateur with the launch of his eponymous label. The unapologetic Scott courted controversy with his brash wit and irreverent approach to dressing. It's completely ludicrous, so you might as well have fun with it. As his 
great patron, Isabella Blow, said to me, you know, this is the avant-garde. And remember, everyone hated Alexander McQueen in his first shows. Scott established his career in Paris, where he presented his collections for over a decade. The French have always treated me as their own since the beginning, even though I am American, but I came here on my own and started from scratch here. His use of Americana, as well as his cartoon interpretation of pop culture, brought him notoriety and caused some to consider him the Jeff Koons of fashion. I think that's me as an American as part of my take on, you know, avant-garde fashion, and that's what sets me apart from other avant-garde designers because of that's where I come from. I grew up in the Midwest, I grew up on a farm, you know, obviously I wore denim and cotton and fleece and jumpsuit, you know, like sweatpants, everything. So it's only natural for me to take that and then take my high fashion kind of ideas and these kind of extreme artistic fantasies and meld them together. I just really like to try to talk about ideas and culture and what's going on and you know everything that's influencing me and touches me and just kind of put it out there for food for thought and so you know it's always kind of evolving and changing you know and you know it's like my generation and the kids out there and people that get it and tune into it are the people that really like it and wear it and you know support it. I love Jeremy Spy. He's a I think his fashion is so fun and he makes clothes for people that want to make a statement and that don't give a f what anyone else thinks. And this could be why he's dressed trend-setting stars from Nicki Minaj to Madonna. Even the late Karl Lagerfeld reportedly claimed that Scott was the only designer who could succeed him at Chanel. The reason why I do this is not to make this season's new skirt length or the perfect pant. That's not my job. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to offer up ideas, fantasies, to, to offer an alternative, to make people think, to create something new and kind of push things forward. In 2013, Scott's career quantum leaped when he was named creative director of the Italian fashion house Moschino. The American in Milan has since catapulted the once withering brand back into the spotlight coveted capsule collections, larger-than-life runways, and major collaborations, including a 2018 collection with fast fashion emporium H&M, have made Moschino and Jeremy a favorite of the fashion flock. This farm boy is undoubtedly living the dream. I was born with nothing, dirt poor on a farm, no name of prestige, no silver spoon, no connections, no reason to be here today. If my story can inspire one person, then I'm really thrilled about that. Step into the Video Fashion Archive to see how Moschino has evolved season after season, ever since creative director Jeremy Scott took over the design helm in 2013.
Alors, the idea was about Miss. You know how it came, that idea? I went to see one movie, which was called Elle s'en va, with Catherine Deneuve. And Catherine Deneuve was doing an ex-Miss Bretagne. I said, I do the contest. Welcome here to the Grand Rex for the election of Miss Jean Bocotier 2015. not Miss France, but it's Miss Tour de France. It is the Miss Vintage, which were the ladies that were like somewhere, were some old model, you know, that came back at 60 and plus. <laughs> Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. And you know what? I should say something also. Is that me, I didn't go to school of fashion. I study fashion, let's say, through magazine. Ma fashion magazine, it was my Bible. And so I wanted to say to some that we love all, you know, like Susie Menkes, of course, Grace Coddington, that we love. Franca, which is so talented also. Uh, Emmanuel Alt, which is great. Karine. Fabian, which drew the numero, which is fabulous. This is a kind of homage about her, you know, because they have the key of fashion. I loved it, it was so much fun and it was perfect, pure Jean-Paul. You know, mixing the, all the elements of his vocabulary together. Yeah, it was very nice because we found again all the Gucci codes, but what I like about Gucci is that every season he reinvents new things and new items of clothes. So I think it was a nice uh, goodbye to the ready to wear, but you know, it was Miss Jean-Paul Gaultier, so it means we will miss him. Don't worry, because I still love to do fashion show. I love to do fashion show. So I should say that Andre Ready to Wear is not how it was when I started. I love to be free and to be enthusiastic about the project. But, 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 I must say that it has to be always creative. If I have not, for me it's not interesting at all. I prefer to do something else. So I don't stop. I love fashion and fashion is everywhere. It's bittersweet. But you know what, I applaud his, his courage to say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to focus on these other things that I love. I'll focus on my couture, I'll focus on my fragrance. And you know what, that is, it takes a lot of courage to say stop, like I don't have anything else to prove. You know, you can take it or leave it. Well, it's very, very poignant. You know, you look back on really 30 years and more, just incredible creativity and constant inspiration and breaking down so many barriers and reinventing the wheel season after season in a sort of incredible way. It's a really uh, tremendous legacy. Who is Miss Jean-Paul Gaultier 2015? Can you tell us the winner is? So get ready. Coco Rocha! And Coco's the winner. Yeah, she is, she is. But you have seen how she fell down and the other one jumped on her? Oh! <laughs> Just fantastic. I must say that I am... How could I not be happy after like some girls that came specially to make my show like that, only because they wanted to do my show, and the girls that I love, and so on. I am very happy. <laughs>
Gupta also used empowering slogans that referenced both pop culture and politics to convey a message of love, respect, and unity. While Gupta is known for his playful, light-hearted approach to design, his fall runway is proof that fashion can tell a story of light and hope in even the most uncertain times. I love posters the way people love art. I collect it, it's hanging on my walls, and I wanted to share that experience of going to a poster shop and leafing through the pages and coming up with like what you want to hang on your wall and live with. So I wanted everyone in the audience to experience that same thing. And then the whole backdrop is very similar to what my inspiration board looks like. It's always a collage of images, but this time I built it all with illustration and posters. Well, my inspiration wall has that imagery, so I'm trying to reflect what it is that I love about those images. The colors, the vibrancy of the orange and pink together, the blue and green together, um, the graphics of the psychedelic art, or the pop art. So I try to recreate it in all the textiles. I think everybody wears a puffer now. Like now that fur is out, wool is out, we, that's kind of our only alternative. So I decided to do an Anna Sui version with Lurex trim and my vibrant colors and patterns. I mean, I'm so blessed to be able to work with all the most beautiful women in the world to wear the clothes. So that's a treat, that, that's a plus. But I think the Anna Sweet Woman is really a spirit, someone that loves textiles, that loves color, that loves pattern, that loves to dress up. So all those elements go into what I do. Fashion Week got the superhero treatment in 2018 when New York designers teamed up with a blockbuster film, Black Panther, to create one-of-a-kind looks inspired by the movie. As we're all aware, uh, Black Panther is set in Wakanda, which is this fictional African nation that's uh, very much technologically advanced. And for us, and for the work we do in general, it's the idea of representing people of color, specifically of people of African descent, because I happen to be of Nigerian descent, in a, a noble and regal light. So it's very much a marriage of cultures. I happen to be inspired both by the Western world and by Africa, just by upbringing. And so we use very much like an African-inspired aesthetics with floral prints, but as well like a Baroque 19th century European stylings and it's very much the idea that by bringing cultures together we can make something new, exciting, and something that speaks to the society that we all hope to have today and what we really very much need together.
the look was inspired, of course, by the film. We saw um, some early shorts and uh, uh, some images from uh, Marvel. We decided to put together like a new version of our Black Panther suit, which is working with the PVC. So a full sleek look, starting like from neck right down to ankle. She's a head-to-toe protective layer, which I think really speaks to the idea of a superhero. I think today it's like a, an historical moment because this is the first time that uh, Marvel is going to have like a black hero. So, which is really important for me because since day one, I do that job because I fight and I stand for diversity. So I feel blessed and I feel totally honored that they contact me to do a look for that. So I really want to embrace the beauty of African culture. I want to respect, I want to show my background. I come from background culture and I take like element of African culture. For me, it's more important that part of my collection, I give love to that pieces. Plus, all the money gonna go to save the children, which for me, it's a dream come true. <laughs> so I made four pairs of shoes uh, for this collaboration, and I think for me, there were so many different iterations that sort of happened. A lot of people don't talk about their insecurities, and I feel like I kind of wanted to examine some of those insecurities through these pieces and some of the questions that I've had, like, you know, on my own as a woman of color recently. And so each one sort of uh, discusses a narrative question. You know, I'm so excited about Black Panther and I think that it's uh, gonna be really fantastic and I'm excited for it to break a lot of records at the box office. We're at an interesting inflection point with not only the fashion industry, but industry in general, where people are using art to speak for people who haven't been spoken for. And I think for these giant companies who have a lot of money making us feel good about ourselves, it's that much more important when you can pour that money into tangible ways to actually help people. From movies and television to sports and fine arts, pop culture provides endless creative inspiration to designers around the world.